Sorry, sorry, I only have 18 seconds. Which are the sites that you propose as an alternative? I don't have a proposal. As so you don't have sign. a proposal alternative? No proposed alternative. No solutions here. No ideas here. But Democrats, we're authorizing 500,000 work permits so people can get on their feet and support themselves. Democrats, we're proposing comprehensive immigration reform. Democrats, we're talking about saying, let's reassess our foreign policies so that people aren't fleeing and, and you know, making sure that we aren't participating in the destabilization of what's happening abroad. And all I'm hearing right now is that we're not being met in the middle. No support, no path to citizenship, no identified alternatives, just grievances. And if we're gonna talk about third parties, Let's talk about the Federalist Society, which has not only had deep ties to Justice Clarence Thomas and his wife, Ginny, but has also helped choose judicial nominees for the Republican Party and directed multi-million dollar media campaigns to confirm them, including a multi-million dollar media campaign for Justice Alito, who uh, seems to like using the Wall Street Journal as his personal press secretary. Earlier today, one of our colleagues, a gentleman from Florida, presented up on this screen something that looked, appeared to be a screenshot of a text message containing or insinuating an explosive allegation. Jim Biden says, this can work. You need a safe harbor. I can work with your father alone. It'll probably take several months and everybody can read the text. Ms. O'Connor, Mr. Dubinsky, if you saw text messages like this between the president's brother and the president's son, wouldn't you be concerned about them trying to give plausible deniability for the president of the United States to not have any knowledge of said business dealings? It's worth Gentlemen's time's expired, but please answer the question. It's worth investigating. That screenshot of what appeared to be a text message was a fabricated image. It was a fabricated image. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was the staff of the committee, but it was not the actual direct screenshot from that phone. And in fact, I would like to submit to the committee the actual full context from, as a, from the Ziegler affid Affidavit number one, exhibit 402 of the full text of that exchange. Do I have permission from the chair? Importantly, what was brought out from, from that fabricated image excluded critical context that changed the underlying meaning and allegation that was presented up on that screen by this committee and by, by members of this committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, it has been repeated, and I would also like to repeat that the allegations being presented uh, by the majority are extremely serious, and the prospect of impeachment is also a gravely serious matter, which has been echoed by our witnesses today. And any serious impeachment investigation or inquiry relies on firsthand sworn testimony of witnesses to high crimes or misdemeanors. Today, the Republican majority has called in three witnesses to advance their case. Mr. Turley, I have a simple question for you. In your testimony today, are you presenting any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by the President of the United States? No, I'm not. No, you are not. Ms. O'Connor, you are the second uh, Republican witness here today. Have you, in your testimony, presented any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by, pre by the President of the United States? I have not. Thank you. Now, Mr. Dubinsky, as the third and final Republican witness, uh, in this hearing, have you, in your testimony, presented any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by the President of the United States? Uh, I have not. And Professor Gerhardt, uh, given that you are the minority witness, I assume the same, correct? I am not a fact witness, correct. Thank you. And to clarify, two individuals presented today who do have firsthand accounts surrounding the progeny of these allegations are being blocked from testifying by the Republican majority. And I want to explain why this is important. Members of Congress, all of us in this hearing, are not under oath, as we are presently covered by the speech and debate clause. Isn't that correct, Professor Gerhardt? That is correct. And the speech and debate clause covers all statements by a member of Congress, whether they are factual or not. There are only four people in this room that are presently under oath 
in their testimony. And those are the four witnesses here today. Is that correct, Professor Gerhardt? That is correct. And so the direct testimony of the four individual witnesses here today are the bona fide words that this committee must use in order to proceed or substantiate an investigation. In, in recent weeks, the governor of New York State and the mayor of New York City proposed a plan to use our national park, Floyd Bennett Field, via the Biden administration to temporary house migrants have become a great concern for our community. Please let me share some of these concerns. This past weekend, there was almost five inches of water covering runway 19, the exact location proposed for housing the migrants. This is not an isolated event, but rather a frequent occurrence. This serves as a stark reminder to the potential dangers of Floyd Bennett Field. In addition, it's a transit desert and has no infrastructure, no plumbing, no electricity, no sewage system. Housing individuals here is equivalent to tarnishing the sanctity of Yellowstone National Park. The irreversible damage of flora and fauna and the destruction of our natural beauty are contrary to the ethos of con conservation and preservation that national parks symbolize. In conclusion, on behalf of every resident of the 5th Ninth Assembly District, I ask the dedicated members of this Committee of Natural Resources to take these points into consideration and reject this proposal. Please reflect, reflect on our commitment to uphold the principles of our environmental stewardship, legislative compliance, ethical responsibility, and humanitarian compassion. And I'd like to emphasize some of the remarks that the ranking member, uh, ranking member Grijalva made in uh, the opening of this hearing, which is really lining out the differences between the folks who are identifying solutions and those who are not. Um, I'd like to submit to the congressional record, rather the record of the committee, uh, two statements um, from what is known uh, as the Common Sense Caucus uh, in the New York City Council, I believe of which uh, Council Member Ariola is a member. The first is a statement on the migrant crisis, and the second is a statement on Secretary Mayorkas as well. Without objection. Now, Council Member Ariola, it says here, um, Ariola, it says here that you've got uh, this statement is in opposition to work permits and work authorizations for newly arrived asylees. Is that correct? That is correct. So you are in opposition. And in this letter, it says, quote unquote, the migrants who have recently arrived in New York should follow the lawful immigration process. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes, it is. Uh, are you aware that seeking asylum is a lawful immigration process? When it is deemed to be asylum. Yes. It has not yet been deemed to be and asylum seekers. And are you aware that application, you have to arrive in the United States in order to apply for asylum, correct? That so is correct. So arrival is also part of that lawful process. Um, I'd like to highlight that. And so when we oppose work authorization, we have folks who are opposing the ability for people who are seeking a lawful process to support themselves who don't want to be a strain on public systems. And we've got folks who want to block people from being able to follow the same American dream that almost every person here, their family comes from. Folks coming here with nothing but the shirt on their back and getting a job and supporting a family. But we've got folks who want to deny that. On the federal level, we have folks who oppose comprehensive immigration reform. I first heard that the Republican side was going to be calling a hearing on third party influence in our courts. I was so excited because I thought, finally, we are going to address the biggest scandal in American democracy currently having, that we are currently having right now, which is the extraordinary corruption and wholesale purchase of members of the Supreme Court. And um, I also find it amusing that we just heard from the Republican side, oh, why do we want to talk about this? Because women have lost the right to choose, because indigenous people have lost rights, because minorities have lost rights, because working people across the country have lost rights due to this level of corruption. 